Are romantic comedies driven by plot or character? As a genre that has three parts, the plot's just there. You know, you, you get together, you get apart, and then you get back together. So I don't think it's so much plot that drives it as it is character. That's where we find our interest, is in the people and how diverse are they, and how opposite are they, or where are their similarities? What is it that took them apart? And how will they possibly get back together? And who's helping them do that? And who's against them doing that? So it's more about character, I think, in a romantic comedy, because it's a genre. And it has its tropes, and it has its steps, and if those aren't happening, then you don't have a romantic comedy. So character is, I think, the most important thing, and that's what you should be focusing on. And let's talk about the character archetypes because you have, as I was saying earlier, sort of the hero worshiper. You have the sort of the type A ambitious that doesn't have time for relationship. Um, you might have sort of the hot girl that no guy is sort of good enough for or similar with the guy. And then you have sort of the shy, you know, what are some of the archetypes that we typically see in romantic comedies, either as the friend or as the protagonist? Some of the typical archetypes, and uh, in the book I did have a, there's a whole section in each movie about the lover types. And indeed, a lot of what you just mentioned, there's the cynical person. Now that's always a real good one, somebody who's been burned and disappointed in love. So the cynic is a wonderful archetype, and I like that definition that a cynic is just a wounded romantic. So seeing that character change and go through a character arc can be very satisfying to us. Also, the person who doesn't even realize they need love, the clueless. You know, it's different from being a cynic, but the clueless person is just, oh no, everything's fine, I'm okay. Maybe I'm in a loveless relationship, but you know, it's convenient, it works. So they need to be waked up. So they're the archetype of the person who needs to be awakened. That just kind of, what? Wow, oh. And then you've got another good one is uh, the bossy person who's always right and always in charge or always wants to be anyway. And then the person who, and I think this is so well done in Down With Love, where you've got Ewan McGregor is the, the type A, confident, always in charge, you know, and he's, a, he's running the show. And all, of course, all the women love him and he's got to, you know, Many, 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 many girlfriends. And then you have uh, Renee Zellweger, who is the formerly mousy secretary, who, I love this, and your writers, I think, will all just roll their eyes. She says, well, you weren't paying any attention to me, and so I decided I was just gonna go off and I was gonna write a book, and so I did. And then it became a bestseller, international. And then I, said, and I went to see it with some writers, and we all went, Oh, is that how that's supposed to work, right? You just write something and it becomes an instant international bestseller. Okay, so she was the person who was waking up. Now she was waking herself up, but bringing the two of them together made a really dynamic uh, energy exchange in that film, Down With Love. So the, the various archetypes you can go from the, uh, the disappointed in love to the still grieving in Must Love Dogs. Christopher Plummer has a wonderful line. He's a father who's a widower. And uh, he says, no, I know I've had the love of my life and there'll never ever be anyone to take her place. But I'm just out there tap dancing as fast as I can, having some fun and just hoping I won't notice all the time what I've lost. I and mean, it's very sad, but it's also very hopeful. So many, many character types can play a part in a romantic comedy. And by choosing different types than what you would think, you can make a much more interesting story.